on your busy day and be here tonight for our opening. I'm thrilled. I, this is my most favorite event of all times, is the 11 day power play. So a little bit different this year, you know, in the middle of COVID, but um, you know, it's special nonetheless. I, it's amazing what you guys have done this year. Well, thanks for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm excited to talk to you about the recent news that Roswell Park was ranked number 14th in cancer I care hospitals it. across the United States. How does that feel? Oh, it's so amazing. You know, last year we were ranked 14th. And, you know, you can't apply for this. It's not like you fill out a form and then they just decide who's who. They grab from databases uh, the some of it we know, some of it we don't, but they grab databases from all kinds of metrics from a can for cancer hospitals. And you just gotta hope that your quality is good enough. You're, you're having fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta hope that you, you know, that you are measuring up. Um, and you just have to, you have to just keep your head down and do the best job that you can. So last year we were 14th, we were thrilled with that because we moved up from 35, something like that. So, you know, you always think to yourself, was it a fluke? Did we really belong in that elite group? Which it is an elite group because, you know, the only other center in New York State that was better than us, all those big places, fancy places in Manhattan, was Memorial Sloan Kettering, which is a great big, mm -hmm. you know, they're ranked number two. So we're so proud. This year we were again 14. Funny that we were the same number, because um, totally different data, totally different things. But what it says is, we belong there. Uh, we belong, and they, they'd even changed some of the metrics that they measured us by. So we were a little worried, but we not only belong there, but we are, we're just thrilled. It's a, it's a testament to the whole team of doctors and staff, everyone involved. It's not just, you know, I, I have very little to do with it, um, quite honestly. And so, um, but it, it's proud for New York. Um, and for all of us. I mean, I've always said that having Roswell Park in our backyard is just such a blessing. And, you know, obviously 11 years almost, it's been 11 years that, you know, I was treated there yes. as a patient. And knowing that I could walk out my door and be treated right in my yes. backyard was just amazing. So I'm so glad that, you know, the care and, and everything that's going on is just still incredible there. Um, I do want to um, talk a little bit about the importance of the funds that, yes. you know, our players raise and they work so hard for. And we just hit a million dollars tonight <laughs> um, right before puck drop. I can't believe it. You know, in the middle of all of this, it just shows the testament of you and Mike um, and what this event means to people and the incredible people that every year come out for this event. Um, and they're not even skating this year. So, wow. It's really amazing. 13, 1,300 players came out or are coming I out know. in the next 11 days. So we're, we're excited to, to greet amazing. them. And you know, the money that's raised by the 11 day is goes for such uh, incredible, innovative um, uh, tr uh, therapies and treatments for patients. And one of them is the brain tumor vaccine, um, the Mimivax, Cervaxin. And it's, it's a Brain tumors, you know, you hear the word that somebody has a brain tumor and you think, oh my goodness, you know, they have maybe just have months to live. And so it's a very difficult um, situation, a very difficult tumor to treat. And this is a vaccine approach, which works uh, using your own immune system and actually has shown remarkable results in early phase studies that have been done with it. So much so that it's now the trial, and this was totally funded by funds from uh, uh, the 11 day power play is now it's gonna go around to 20 different cancer centers around the country and expanding the trial. And hopefully at the end of that trial, uh, we hope if the results go as we hope they do, that then this would be an approved therapy. And think about that, an approved therapy to treat brain tumors that was funded by the 11 day by our community by our community exactly it's really amazing it's really amazing so this year um roswell park established the covid response fund. yes um and maybe you could talk a little bit about what what that is and how it's helped and um you know one hundred fifty thousand dollars was donated from the 11 day power play our own players um, i know it was, so it was remarkable so you know covid what we're still in the middle of it knock on some wood we hope that we're we're going to keep our numbers down here in Western New York, but COVID is, um, and, and 
you may think, oh geez, why would a cancer center be involved in COVID? COVID was, is it a, you know, a, the immune system is such a big part of our uh, study in finding new treatments for cancer. And COVID, uh, when someone has to be put in the ICU and be put on a ventilator, the reason for that is, is you have an immune storm that's going on in your lungs in response to this virus infection. And you can't breathe. And it's the, the sort of the accumulation of all of your immune system fighting each other to cause this. And we know a lot about the immune system and we know a lot about that immunologic storm. Uh, cancer centers around the country have played a really important role in the fight against COVID. And so um, we are, uh, we've been fortunate that we didn't have as many cancer patients with COVID, but the COVID relief fund helps to fund an initiative. One of just one of the initiatives is we're collecting samples. These guys are having too much fun. Um, we're collecting samples from COVID cancer patients and we're looking at particular markers that they may have uh, depending on their course you know many people have a mild form of covid some people get really sick feel lousy like the flu other people end up in the icu and so looking at those little immunological markers and in patients that have different outcomes we'll be able to learn a lot and be able hopefully to predict your COVID experience is going to be a mild one uh, versus you need to be careful because you're, you're prone to go in and have this immunologic storm in your lungs. So very exciting. And we couldn't have done that without those, in it, those funds that helped to really form the basis for putting that study together. It's incredible. It is. It's, it's really, it's exciting. So, you know, treatment for patients is so important at Roswell for yes. any cancer patient. I mean, they are just very compromised and, and they, you know, cancer doesn't stop, right? So it does not stop. what has Roswell done this year to really, you know, change things, maybe encourage patients to come in for their regular testing? Yeah, it's been very difficult. Um, we all were terrified when the governor sort of shut the state down in the middle of March. Um, we sort of sent people home. We couldn't, you know, we had cancer patients to take care of. We had people coming in to see us. You can't turn them away. People were scared. Physicians were scared. Nurses were scared. What we had to do is we had to create a very safe environment for our patients and for our physicians and nurses and staff so that they felt comfortable coming to work. So testing was absolutely critical and getting test results quickly so we could test a patient determine their negative, sort of put people's uh, mind at ease and enable them to get the care that they needed. And slowly but surely, we have developed that feeling of, quote, trust uh, so that patients can come because we were so worried that we would have patients that would delay their treatments uh, and come to us with advanced disease where we couldn't do as much for them. So it's really, we've really been very successful in getting our patients back, and actually we're back to our pre-COVID levels of outpatients and even inpatients. So we've been, knock on something again, we've been uh, doing it safely. Incredible. Um, I, think, I think that's important for patients to know in the it community. Is. You know, don't stop your treatment, still no. continue to, to come to Roswell. They have precautions in place. I know when I was there a couple of weeks ago, I was tempted. I was asked questions. Yes. Um, I felt very secure and safe. You know, a, a mask was offered to me, and, and anything else that I may have needed. So I, I did appreciate that. Um, so going back to hockey. Yes. Are you a hockey fan? I, I'm a huge hockey fan. I've been watching. It was so funny when that first hockey game was on TV. I mean, you could almost hear it in your neighborhoods because everybody was so thirsty uh, to watch hockey. I'm just disappointed the Sabers aren't in it. You know, would have been nice. I know. And yeah. Do you mind sharing like where you're from and, and yeah. you know why you went into the field that you're in? I I I grew up in Central Ohio, and um, you know I always I tell this story. I always wanted to be a ballerina. I was a dancer, and my father was one of those. I'm not sending you to school to be a dancer. What are you gonna do? You're not that talented, um, which I wasn't to be a, like on the stage or something, and so. He said, you got to go to school, you got to have a purpose, Candace. And I was very good in math and science. You know, I might have had this little artsy, creative side to me. I think it's made me a better scientist. But So I went into um, science, uh, math, I loved math, and it sort of took me on a path 
uh, to where I am today. I think that one of the things is I, I'm like a crazy person to figure stuff out. And so I always wanted answers. And so when you're in my business, there's always things that you need to find the answer to. And so I was geared towards all of that. I went to The Ohio State University in Columbus, um, a great place to go to go to uh, college because uh, football program is really good. Their hockey team's pretty good too. <laughs> college hockey is great. Um, the Big Ten college hockey was really fun uh, too. So, uh, and then I was in, I went, you know, when you finish your training, you have to go to places and learn. So I was in Detroit for about four years and then I was at the University of Colorado for eight years. And then I came to the University of Pittsburgh for 12 years and I've been here for 18 years. So, wow. Well, yeah. we're happy you're here. Well, I'm yeah. delighted to hear. I'm not going anywhere else. <laughs> and congratulations on all the lists that I, you know, top women. Oh, in, thank you. In Western New York. Thank and, you. you know, you're just doing a phenomenal job well, at Roswell. I'm very proud of that. And I, I uh, it's one of the fun things that I do when I talk to young women uh, that just need some encouragement. Uh, you can have your dreams. You can do what, I mean, you're, you're a very empowered woman and you've achieved much. So you should be very proud of yourself too. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. And thank I you. Think, I think we should check out the game a little bit. I think we should.